to be healed, to be made well. We may be hurting, we may be sick, but we don't want to ask, God, make me well. But God is working in us all the time. God, we call it, we call it, we call it grace. That's God's spirit working in us. And God's spirit working in us makes us well, makes us healed, and gives us that what we need to be happy and healthy. Amen. We're going to uh, bless the food that we collect for the missions. Let us pray. God of love and abundance, we pray your blessing on this food that all those in need, those in need of, uh, of food and the basics of life may have what they, what they need, and that we may be inspired in our generosity. All this we ask in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues with the reading of the Holy Scripture.
its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring it into the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord.
When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Part of the tale. 
So I'll read you the, the, the second part that we didn't have in the gospel reading. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore the Jews started, started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. Uh, the usual disc disclaimer here about John's Gospel is when he's saying the Jews, it's not Jewish people, but certain, a certain part of the Jewish establishment that, uh, uh, that we're talking about here. Pharisees, the scribes, uh, priests, and what, whatnot. So not only does this man not express a, a desire to be made well explicitly, or take steps to become well himself, but he also identifies Jesus to those who are trying to kill him, confirming that he did indeed heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus could have healed any of the sick who were gathered around the pool of Bethesda, but he chose this man, a man who seems to have little merit, that he doesn't express a desire to be healed, and in thanks for his healing, he cooperates with Jesus' enemies. But this matters little to Jesus. Jesus doesn't wait for an affirmative answer. He simply commands him, take up your mat and walk. And thus the man is healed, like that. No need to be immersed in the healing waters of this pagan temple. No need for Jesus to lay on hands, even. And no, and no need even for the man to ask to be healed. We live in a world that purports to work by merit. And I say purports because we, we need only look around at how our society and economies work to see great injustice in our world. But at least we like to think that people get what they deserve. Good people deserve good things, and bad people don't. People who work hard and put in effort should advance and succeed, while those who do not suffer the consequences of their laziness. This is how our economy is theoretically modeled to work. And for many people, this is how life in general should work as well. The gospel of grace the basis of the entire New Testament doesn't work like this, however. Those who do the most good don't receive an extra dose of blessings, and those who fail to do good are not lost. God's grace is given freely, beyond and oftentimes in spite of our merit, or our lack of merit. We don't receive God's grace by deserving it, nor do we even have to ask for it. God's grace is freely given, not according to what we deserve, but according to what we need. And we have a hard time wrapping our heads around this grace-based theology because it goes against what we've been taught in our human society as a whole. So strong is this notion of merit that, we, that it has been a constant struggle for the church to guard against falling into some sort of works-based theology. Of course, the medieval Catholic Church, the Catholic Church of the time just before the Reformation, may first come to our minds as the Protestant reformers were focused on 
wiping out the works-based system of salvation that had uh, snuck in. But so strong is the pull of our merit or action-based thinking that even in Protestantism, works-based thinking has crept in. Something theologians call decision theology is quite prevalent in evangelical Christianity, which boils down to saving grace to a momentary decision for Christ, usually in conjunction with an altar call or by praying some sort of sinner's prayer. But it's still based on our individual action and initiative. And far worse still is the very popular prosperity theology, which seems to be running rampant in our time, by which strong faith is rewarded with material wealth and worldly happiness. It's a very tempting idea, as heretical as it is. True grace, however, is not dependent on our action. Perhaps the most graphic illustration of this comes from our own sacramental life, especially the sacrament of holy baptism. And we plan to have baptism on Pentecost in a few weeks. People often ask why we baptize infants who have no idea what is happening, who have no choice or agency in the matter. And true, there are some Christian denominations who do only baptize adults or children old enough to make a conscious and informed decision. But we Anglicans, as well as Roman Catholics, Orthodox, and more or less majority of mainline Protestants do baptize infants, as well as adults, when the need arises. And I believe it was the great Protestant reformer Mark Luther who explained it best. God's grace starts working in the child before the child even knows it. And the child is unable to do anything to start or influence this process of their own volition. And that's how God's grace works in all of us. God is at work in our lives and in us in ways we don't realize and before we can even notice. Really, all our sacramental theology, our sacramental life works this way. In the sacrament of Holy Communion, we receive the means of grace in the bread and wine. We don't have to pass a test. We don't have to prove our worth or otherwise demonstrate that we deserve to receive this grace. It's given to us freely. Whether people think we are a saint or a sinner, even though in truth we all are a combination of both, saints and sinners at the same time. So whenever you feel unworthy, worthless, not good enough, or just plain lost, remember that God is always right there with us, within us, and God's grace is working in us in ways we may not notice, or may not yet be able to recognize and appreciate. Amen. Let us stand and confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
resurrected to life, and the life everlasting. Susan, but she's not able to be with us today, so I will be using the prayers that she has sent to me. At this time, I would invite our online worshiping community to submit their prayer requests. Let us pray for Pete, the peace of the world. We pray for the world leaders and in all authority. Lord, help them to serve the people according to your will. We pray for all the people who are facing the tribulations of war, famine, natural disasters, or have been displaced from their homes. Grant them your strength, comfort, and fill them with hope. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our country, that you guide us to contribute to its growth and well-being. Father, Light in every heart awareness that we are all your children, different because you created us that way. Let us greet each person we meet with love, so that we may be strengthened to work together for peace and live together in harmony with justice for all. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all women around the world when the control and oppression of women is becoming worse. Open the minds and hearts of our leaders to respect the rights and needs of all and to act with fairness. Lord, in your mercy, may we discover new and just ways of sharing the goods of the earth, working against exploitation, greed, ignorance, or lack of concern. May we all live by the abundance of your gifts and mercies. We pray for the whole people of God, that each may find joy in being their true and faithful servant. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our children and young people. Father, guide their growth and development. Be with them as they head toward the end of their school year and grant them peace of mind when facing exams. Give all parents and teachers wisdom as they reflect your face to children. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for the unknown and uncelebrated heroes among us, for our police and firefighters, for teachers, and in particular for the nurses and doctors who care for the sick and injured, and for those caring for loved ones facing illness or the end of life. We give you thanks, Lord, for all those among us who quietly live their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the infinite wisdom of Christ for those who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ. And we ask that you grant them the gifts of the Spirit. In particular, we pray for Vera, Kat, Anna, Anne, Art, Lorna, and Aileen, for Steve, for Colleen and Janet, for Gordon and Deirdre, for Gloria, Elena, Mary, Sue, and Jane. And we pray also for Sylvia's mother, and for Mary, and for Carrie and Jackie. Grant their families and caregivers your strength and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have departed this life. Grant them rest with you. And we pray for the family and friends of all who are mourning the loss of loved ones. 
And now I ask that you please name aloud or quietly those on your hearts. And at this time, there are no online requests and we continue to pray for our online community. And in the words of the Primate's Prayer, for food in a world where many walk in hunger, for faith in a world where many walk in fear, for fellowship in a world where many walk alone, we give you thanks, O Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a sign of the peace of Christ with your neighbor or online in the comment section.
Let us pray. God of glory, accept all we offer you this day, and bring us to that eternal city of love and light, where Christ is King. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name as we sing. Much faith, and you who would like to have more, 
You who have been to this sacrament often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to remind you that this is not the table of Christ Church Bow Repair, nor of the Anglican Church of Canada. This is Christ's table. All are welcome. And as you may have heard last, if you were here last Sunday, uh, we have returned to coming up for communion, so please come to the center. And if you would like a blessing but not communion, please cross your arms. And of course, we have gluten free hosts as well.
once again, I forgot to mention that uh, Karen is in the chapel for prayer ministry. Just uh, as, a, as a general notice from, from now on, if you see Karen standing over there, that's why. She's always available for prayer support in the chapel if she's here, and if she's standing over there, that's what that means. So she'll be there after the service as well if you need uh, uh, prayer support for healing or any other needs. Uh, she will pray with you. And now together we pray. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Before I even ask if there are birthdays, I know there's one. Uh, Eldon Wilson has a birthday this very day. And you want me to say how many? Okay. I, I asked, uh, that's why I asked. 90. <laughs> so, we're definitely going to sing, but uh, is it, are there any other birthdays this week? All right, so let's, let's sing for... as you want, and, and that helps. 
One other thing we need um, is a delegate for Senate, diocesan Senate. Diocesan Senate is the, is the decision-making body of the diocese. It's like our parliament. Um, and we have, as a parish, we have two representatives. One, a clerical representative, i.e. me, that by virtue of my office, and then we have an elected member of the congregation. We had an elected member, but uh, unfortunately he's had, had to leave us to be with his family in Ontario. So we need a Senate delegate, and this is coming up soon. This is on June 18th. It's an all-day event downtown at the cathedral. Uh, you don't have to have a, a long resume to do this job. Uh, the first qualification is you need to be available on June 18th, all day. That's the first minimum qualification. You don't have to have experience with these sort of things. You just have to have a willingness to listen, participate, and, and learn. Uh, there are there is training for new synod delegates, and uh, you know you may think I know all these things, but I was a new a synod delegate just a couple of years ago, so I didn't know all. But it's not, it's, it's an interesting way to learn about how the greater church works, not just the parish, but the, the church at the diocesan level. And we do need a representative, uh, because if, if we don't, we're unrepresented as a parish. So if you might consider that, please come talk to me as soon as possible. Uh, on Sunday, June 12th, we're planning to have a church picnic. That's Trinity Sunday. Uh, it will be outdoors, weather permitting. Uh, I don't know if we'll move it inside, if not because we're allowed to do that now, or whether we'll reschedule it, but let's hope for good weather, and so tentatively, June 12th, uh, after the service. Before that, on June 4th, uh, we are participating in the Big Gift, which is an ecumenical uh, project among various churches and various denominations uh, to give back. And different churches do different things. Some have, you know, free services, uh, you know, bicycle repair, uh, uh, dog grooming, or whatever, make, making food for the people. Our parish, for the past several years, has done a big food collection. So, like we do on a regular basis, we collect food. But this is on a, a grand scale, and we try to reach out to the greater community as much as possible. And we support uh, three missions, and I'm. Drawing on Rock, on Rock. West, Island, West Island Assistance and also at St. Michael's Mission downtown. Yes, so it's two West Island uh, missions and St. Michael's, our Anglican mission downtown. Uh, this will be, the collect, collection will be from 11 to 2 on June 4th. We need people to, uh, to be there to receive the food. Uh, again, not much qualification required, just if you be free that day and uh, be able to man the table uh, for those hours. Also, drivers will be needed to uh, transport the food to the collection point, the, the central collection point. And also, we need people to distribute flyers, posters, and uh, get the word out. There are posters and flyers at the back, and there's also a sign-up sign -up sheet at the, at the desk at, out front. Um, sign-up sheets for to, to to note your ability, your availability to, to staff the tables or drive or uh, distribute flyers or whatever. We had a very good turnout last year, even though it was pouring down rain for part of the day. Uh, so let's see if we can top that uh, this year. Uh, any other announcements? Yes. Um, uh, Susan asked that I remind everyone about the fun script. Today is the last day to fill out uh, an order for fun script the month of May. Uh, the order forms are at the back and you can fill it out and leave it on the table. Myself or Eileen will bring it into the office and Susan will come by during the week to pick up those forms. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. If there are no other announcements, we will end with our, our recessional hymn for the healing of the nations, common phrase 576. 